uh, testifying in front of uh, our committee. I am a new member of the committee. I'm very honored to be here. Last week, I was at home in my district and met with every single uh, transportation stakeholder uh, in my district, and their message to me is the same message I think that you're giving the committee, is that we need a long-term uh, sustainable uh, finance service transportation bill uh, here in Congress. And we all know that sort of the vexing challenge here is uh, how to you know, what is, what is the mechanism? How are we going to provide uh, that uh, revenue source to pay for uh, the so important investments that we need to make? So I just wanted to ask all of you, in terms of the organizations that you represent, has there been a discussion or any specific recommendations um, from the League of Cities or from the state highway transportation officials uh, about a, a, a specific position with raising the gas tax or a one-time or ongoing repatriation uh, uh, method, if, if you've made any recommendations or made those, had any of those discussions? Uh, we have had extensive discussions in an ongoing way in the National League of Cities about funding transportation. And there are many options, as this committee knows better than anyone, in terms of how to fund them. At the local level, we rely on the gas tax as a primary source of funding. And we recognize there are times we have to bite the bullet if we are going to provide for transportation infrastructure in our communities. And as tough as it is, uh, those are decisions that we make um, every day or every year, certainly, when it comes to our budgets and looking at what our needs are and justifying the needs and, and living up to a long-term commitment we have to our communities. So for us, whether it is the Grow America Act proposal, whether it is a gas tax, or whether it is some congestion pricing formula, whatever kinds of approaches that you would find uh, acceptable, the important thing from our vantage point is to make a decision. Uh, the American people, we believe, certainly our communities reflect this, expect us to make those hard decisions and accept it uh, without consequence, I can tell you, in terms of our, our elected uh, and, and political lives. Mr. Cox. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, first of all, it would, be, it would be hard to overstate my agreement, our agreement with you, that a long-term sustainable source of funding for, for transportation is absolutely needed. Um, AASHTO has put together a matrix of, that illustrates a, a large menu of options, every one known to us, at, and, and most of those are known to many, but have, that have been exhaustively discussed. The, uh, I'm not sure that there's any out there that uh, there may be some creative alternatives out there that have yet have yet to uh, to make it to the list. The the elephant in the room for sure is how to pay for this. I think from the perspective of our states, um, whatever immediate short-term action needs to be done, whatever needs to be done in terms of a multi-year bill, th probably is going to involve a a little bit of a different consideration than is. What does the future look like? Because I think all of us recognize that that the uh, Highway Trust Fund and the funding mechanism for it is one that is becoming um, inadequate. And so what does that look like um, in the future that will be a combination, most assuredly, of options? But it would be fair to say that any and all options would be acceptable within your organizations. There wouldn't be any of those options that would not be acceptable. Correct. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Mayor, I wanted to ask you, I was uh, um, excited about your testimony as it relates to um, better uh, pedestrian uh, traffic and bicycle uh, and the use of bicycles. And um, actually, in my district, which is Ventura County uh, in California, we have twice as many people who bike or walk to work that use transit. Um, so, you know, my question is, is just a broad one, is that how do you think that Congress can best support uh, local communities that want to invest more uh, in bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure? 
Uh, thank you for that. This transformation is really remarkable uh, that we see around communities all across the country for active transportation. And it is where there is clearly, I can tell you in our region, the most energy of people excited and, and willing to, uh, to take it on. My sense is that if you dedicate the TAP funds uh, and make that clearly for those purposes so they don't get diverted, the CMAC funds, and to the extent you can identify funds that should be used uh, for active transportation, it goes so much further than we see for funds for roads because the, usually the infrastructure improvements are so much less expensive. And we just saw in legislation passed by our state last week that for the first time they are actually identifying specifically active transportation funding at the state level as well. And do you have data to show that uh, that kind of investment is really reducing congestion uh, in your area? We are tracking that very closely. There is national information. be happy to try to um, get to you on that. Um, and I can tell you locally we are tracking it um, very closely. And there is no question that even where we take out a lane of traffic on some of our streets and slowing the traffic down, we are actually providing for more people getting, getting through on those streets. Mr. Cox, do you have any comments on bicycle and ped pedestrian infrastructure? Mr. Chairman, as a, as a lifelong cyclist and competitive <laughs> cyclist as well, um, uh, I am absolutely in favor of the use of alternative modes of transportation. Having said that, l let, me, let me just comment on this and to kind of come back to the big picture in terms of what is facing us today. In, in Wyoming and I think in many states, I am trying to solve a $15 problem with 10 bucks. And if at the end of the day, under the, under the MAP 21 construct, if the, I think uh, Rep, uh, Ranking Member DeFazio mentioned it's $10 billion before just the end of this year. And so as we consider these emerging needs, these emerging, the things that are very popular and the things that will reduce congestion in those areas where that is sorely needed, we also need to keep our eye on the ball, I believe, though, and that is that what are we going to do in the, in the shorter term? Because if we um, if we are not careful, we can end up dividing what already exists or, and, and don't know how to fund tomorrow um, to, to, too much. And, and in, um, in my state, one of, the, one of the illustrations that we use with our legislators at the state level is, I think it has to be dumbed down so I can understand it, okay? But we use what we call the Fram oil filter illustration, pay me now or pay me later. And if you spend a dollar today on the infrastructure, um, you'll save four to eight to 12 bucks later on. That's the problem that is really kind of overpowering us right now. Um, but in agreement with the fact that all of these other modes um, and possibilities need to be taken into consideration as time goes on. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Director Cox, the time has long ago expired. Mr. Davis is next on our side. Well, 